Hello everyone, today is Tuesday, October 6th, 2020. My name is Evan, welcome back to another midweek stock market analysis video. We got lots going on today. Let's jump right into our market technicals dashboard. You can see stocks on the session across the board were lower today, uh, Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ 100 down uh, about one and a half to two percent. The Russell 2000, certainly the standout today in terms of relative performance down just slightly on the day, but still negative. And if we look at that five day change numbers for the indices now, you can see the Russell 2000 also a very clear standout, almost five percent over the past five days. Take that in context to the NASDAQ 100, which is down slightly 0.37 percent over the five days. So selection here, stock selection sector selection has mattered. Uh, pretty dramatically over this time period. If we look at uh, key simple moving averages, we're still above the 10 SMA across the board. Uh, 50 SMA is a mixed picture and we are above the 200 period simple moving average. Now, if we scroll down and take a look at sectors here, we got utilities and real estate really dominating the top of this list, uh, five and 4% respectively. Number three slot is financials, 3% uh, on that sector. On the downside, we have uh, communication services, we have energy, we have technology. Those are the three, only three negative sectors here over the past five days uh, by about 1% to nearly flat in tech. If we look at major markets, this is where we see some interesting behavior here. VIX is at the top of this list, up 14%, followed by emerging markets and oil. So a very interesting bunch there rounding out the top. High yield also making it to its fourth spot. So again, very interesting bunch there. On the downside, we've got silver, we've got TLT, we've got IEF. These are bond ETFs, uh, middle of the curve, basically long end of the curve, uh, underperforming over the past five trading sessions. So let us jump into the charts. Let's try and make some sense of this action. There are a ton of mixed signals out there uh, in markets right now. And I'm gonna lead with that because um, you're probably gonna be dizzy about some of the pros and the cons. And we're gonna try and jump back and forth and really sort of just objectively highlight all of the good things that are happening and all of the not so good things that are happening. And then hopefully, that can help you inform uh, your decision making. So if we look at our chart here, we've got TC2000 open. This is our equity market grid. Price are, is the white dashed lines on all of these charts. And the colored dots is a custom uh, smart trend filter of ours, measures price and volume and uh, trend strength. So starting with the S&P 500, it's a weekly time frame. You can see that the S&P 500 this week so far, it is only Tuesday, is back to a green signal here. This is a bullish signal. Remember the last two weeks we went neutral here in the S&P 500. Well, we're back to bullish so far on Tuesday. NASDAQ, uh, no change. It has been bullish ever since the uh, first week of May, and that continues to be the case. Russell 2000 bottom left, back to bullish as well. Acquiexus International stocks also continuing to hold on to bullish, no change there whatsoever on the weekly time frame. So the bottom line here is uh, for the weekly basis, the Russell and the S&P 500 back to a bullish signal. Now, if we go down to a daily chart, uh, we also have some interesting changing behavior here because the S&P 500, despite the turnaround today, which we are gonna talk about, went bullish. Uh, so the S&P 500 is printing a green bullish trend signal here on this particular indicator on this particular time frame, which is the daily chart. Last time that this happened was back here uh, on the 2nd. Uh, and on the 3rd of September is when we went into neutral. And then we started this bearish to neutral slide. So we're getting our first print of uh, hope, so to speak, or a buy signal here for the S&P 500 today. Same thing with the Russell 2000, bottom left here. This is printing buy signal today as well, first day. Acquiex, same thing down here, first day buy signal. NASDAQ, you can see, didn't quite turn up. Uh, it did turn up last week and then it went back to neutral. So it is still, um, you know, maybe a slightly relative laggard here in the short term, but it did turn up back here and we like to always give the benefit of the doubt to the prior trend. So. Um, it's kind of in a very similar camp. So this is all constructive news. This is bullish developments across the board, basically weekly and daily transitions happening here across the major markets. Now, here's what's not so bullish. If we go down to uh, some candlestick analysis and we look here at 
the S&P 500, the daily time frame, and we look at today's session. This was a um, this was a loud sort of day to take notice. That's usually the way we like to phrase it. As what we usually coin these days is when significant price action or you know fairly extreme price action happens at important spots. And I would label today's as being uh, an important spot for lots of different markets. We got outside abrupt reversal days, uh, news events obviously associated with that, but that aside, we're looking at price action here, and we are seeing that uh, the S&P 500 failed uh, basically kind of exactly where it should, right? Again, if we think about markets in terms of technicals and trying to use technicals as our roadmap, uh, then these markets so far are continuing to behave exactly like you would want to see as a technician. 3400 to 3410, these levels have been drawn on this chart for many weeks now, same chart we've been looking at. And you can see we did briefly overshoot it today and we were attempting to break out just like we did back here on the 16th, like we did on the 15th, like we did on the 10th, like we did on the 9th. All of these attempts intraday over 3,400 failed, and we got another failure here today, it dropped us right back to the opening and the lows of uh, yesterday's session. So in the short term, this is where the mixed signals are gonna start coming in. From a price action perspective, you just got rejected here at resistance, and it is a single candlestick, but it would be enough uh, in the very short term to probably start to pump the brakes and be wary of a reversal at hand. Now remember, that is coming at the exact same time that our daily trend signal is starting to turn up. So you have, again, conflicting signals here when looking at price action analysis, supply and demand on a you know horizontal level like we are looking at here versus that indicator that's based on price and volume and uh, per time. So that is uh, you know one thing to keep an eye on i think you know very clearly from again supply demand perspective 3410 or you know 3400 that is still the elephant in the room here for the s&p 500 that is what we need to get back above on a closing basis we uh, arguably did do it yesterday we closed at 3408 uh, but again uh, getting a close back over there maybe you want to go a little bit more conservative and say 3410 3420 starting to get closes back over there, um, would just, again, rebuild the bull case. Now again, again, keeping context in mind, time frame in mind, this reversal here doesn't have to lead to the end of the world. It doesn't have to lead to, you know, this big drastic move down that, you know, continues to spiral markets out of control. Maybe we're just coming back down to 3330, right? And this area that's been holding a support, this open gap that has been in place now for two weeks, this is the spot now you want to see hold. So if we do get follow through selling tomorrow, uh, your ideal scenario is, you know, frankly, even if we gap lower, to essentially kind of come back down here and hold this level. That's what's gonna keep this market, you know, uh, you know, technically kind of holding up. If we start rolling over with volume, with urgency, with another, you know, heavy sell day tomorrow, and we break below 33.30, then we're gonna have some trouble. Then we're gonna have, um, you know, conversations that look more towards prior levels and, you know, these lower 3000s. So that's the way I'm sort of looking at the uh, price action right now, short term, very much dislike the rejection here at resistance. I do want to respect the fact that these indicators are trying to turn up. So follow through tomorrow, I think is going to be a very important sort of uh, measure here for market pulse. If we look at the Russell 2000, <clears throat> this has suddenly become the bright spot in the market. Now, of course, today's action and today's candlestick looks pretty horrible. Again, failing at technical resistance 159 these were this was the highs here from uh, this August range you can see we failed and basically topped up at these levels we essentially saw the same thing happen today but even prior to today I do want to speak to just again this very fast and sharp move here from 142 all the way to the day's highs here this was a 13 percent move in eight trading sessions so the Russell 2000 went from being you know out of favor <clears throat> excuse me to being the index that uh, had been, you know, really leading and, and powering us higher over this past week and a half of trading. So it is notable here, the rotation. I like the fact it's above 154. I like the gap and go action from Monday above this key level. So there is certainly a lot to like. And, you know, this in a vacuum here, again, after 12% up in a pretty much a straight line, 
this rejection and even a little bit of a pullback, maybe fill this gap in here, but if we can hold and put in a higher low over the 150s, that seems reasonable. That seems like it could be, you know, arguably healthy on a more intermediate term basis. We'll see what we get. But for now, the Russell 2000 uh, trying to, you know, help lead this market. But, you know, obviously we can't um, forget about this high volume reversal here that is certainly, um, you know, the mixed signal in the other direction. NASDAQ 100, again, this has been kind of more muted and subdued here. It hasn't really been outright bearish at all. It's just, it's not making the moves like we saw, I'm sorry, in uh, the Russell 2000, like we saw in this chart, right? It's not, it's not swinging 13% in a straight line um, to the upside. It's, uh, it's kind of just grinding along here and uh, it is basing underneath resistance. So this arguably could turn into a very bullish looking pattern. No, lots of people are looking at this kind of inverted head and shoulders look uh, that very well may be the case. All I know right now is that uh, 280 is still resistance and uh, we had a little bit of this kind of rug pull here that we identified on uh, last Thursday. Continues to be the case, continues to be resistance, sellers showing up uh, up at those levels. So until and if that changes, then um, you know we're still in kind of a holding pattern and consolidation. Ideally, you know, all this consolidation takes place over, let's call it 270 uh, to keep this acting and holding up. Uh, if we start rolling over below 270, then things get more dicey. So NASDAQ, um, you know, kind of wait and see mode, 280 is the clear level to the upside. So that's kind of the price action there uh, in terms of market, in terms of, uh, you know, just the general broad indices. Uh, I'll skip forward and actually take a look at the VIX here to, to add a little more uh, nuance and and you know, problematic stuff going on here in the short term. The VIX is back up to 30. Uh, 30 here is, you know, kind of the very dangerous level. It's just a broad, you know, line in the sand that I like to use of of really just being where, where things can get pretty silly. Uh, you know, with VIX over 30, uh, markets can do some pretty crazy things. So uh, let's be aware of that if we do get follow through tomorrow. I mean, you know, if you're a contrarian here and uh, you're looking at this price, uh, past price action, selling VIX, selling volatility, uh, you know, as it's come up into this 30 level has been a good trade over the past two weeks. Uh, so the question you have to ask yourself is, is this time different, right? It, you know, are you gonna get that same sort of type of reaction here where we fade at the highs? Uh, I obviously don't know what the answer to that is. Um, all I know is, you know, VIX at 30 is, you know, historically the top of this range. And it's also, um, you know, a pretty critical kind of psychological level uh, for this market. So let's pay attention to it. Certainly not good that it's up here. Certainly not good that, you know, it's been sort of rallying along with price and, um, you know, stubbornly kind of uh, staying pretty pent up. So that's uh, that's sort of, you know, the kind of the broad market look here uh, in terms of uh, major markets and, and um, volatility. If we go to, um, you know, some of these other charts here, TLT, uh, you can see TLT, let's go to a daily chart and all this, TLT back in a sell signal. Um, you know, this has been kind of bouncing around and, and really kind of being ping ponged around, uh, it is you know kind of stretched to the downside over the past couple of days. It did rebound today, uh, but it is printing you know kind of bearish trend here. So uh, be interesting to see if you know if we do get follow through weakness in the equity markets, what happens to TLT? Does this actually get rotation? Uh, so far, you know it's been you know continuing to sell off here TLT, which has been um, you know kind of an interesting new behavior. Um, that, that, that we're experiencing. So be interesting to watch this right now, sell signal, but due for some type of bounce. If we look at commodities here um, on a daily chart, you can see gold uh, sort of rolling over a bit today. We'll look at that in just a moment. Silver, kind of the same thing. I mean, gold is printing, you know, neutral, uh, you know, um, outlooks here. Silver has been bearish, so no change there. Silver still in kind of a downtrend sell mode. Gold, um, you know, still in sell mode and, more or less, but it's, you know, at least a little more choppy here in the short term. Uh, oil is, uh, you know, kind of literally all over the place. It is making huge swings in both directions. Um, and, uh, you know, it continues to be in a difficult spot in terms of a trend basis. It's still neutral here. It's trying to flip that, go back bullish. We'll see if that happens. It did close higher today. Uh, DBC, uh, which is commodity ETF, did print bullish today on uh, our trend filter. So I think both of that is, uh, you know, kind of interesting. Uh, I want to flash forward here to some sectors. Uh, there have been more sectors that are starting to print buy signals here. So again, even tech, XLK, notice here, uh, printing a buy signal today. Uh, look at discretionary up here, printing a buy signal on today's action. Financials, printing a buy signal on today's action. Industrials, printing a buy signal on today's action. So there are, again, lots of 
um, pockets of strength. There are markets that are trying to hang in there and turn around, but we cannot ignore the fact that, again, we are still hitting these, you know, mean spots of clear resistance here. And uh, it's just really going to be interesting to see, you know, kind of how this week plays out and, you know, how long um, this resistance will in fact hold and what kind of, you know, follow through sellers can actually get us, um, you know, throughout the rest of this week. So the only other kind of charts I wanted to leave with were a lot of the things we highlighted from our Friday recap, uh, biotech, biotech getting a big breakout this week. So Monday of uh, this uh, of this week, you can see we, we were looking at this kind of um, resistance band here for a while, 136 to 137. We've been talking about biotech a lot. It had a really ugly Friday. This was a very uh, discouraging sort of candle here on Friday's action. But then we followed it up with this thing, which was a rocket ship back over resistance. And um, this, I think, sets that new tone and gets you that breakout. Obviously, today's action was not uh, was not so pretty. But if we can hold over 136, uh, for the rest of this week, that's going to be constructive. And I'd be, you know, continuing to kind of focus and pay attention to biotech here. You can look at XBI as well. Both of these, um, you know, kind of um, different patterns, but getting back up there. Uh, the other market is XLU. So this is utilities, uh, the other sector. We highlighted this on Friday as well. And uh, this year acting, you know, continues to act very strong this week. Uh, in fact, it was up still uh, almost 1% today. Heavy volume coming in. It has been up uh, let's see, out of the last uh, eight trading day, or 12 days, eight bars, uh, so seven out of the last eight bars. Um, so it's been quite strong from the bottom end of this range, the middle end of that range to the top end. Uh, it does seem pretty stretched to the upside, um, but uh, you know, acting well nonetheless. And financials, let's just take a quick peek at them. Uh, you can see here uh, bearish engulfing bar and um, not the prettiest look here after today's action, heavy volume kind of uh, coming in as well. So this might put, um, you know, a dampening on some of this near term rally, but uh, certainly got a nice lift here from the bottom of that range. So that's it. That is what I got for today's uh, trading and midweek uh, kind of update. Lots going on, lots of cross currents. You got to know your time frame. You got to know your strategy. You got to know, you know, really what you're looking at and, and be sort of experienced and professional here, managing risk and being agile. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be a very difficult market, I think, for lots of traders. So, um, you know, doing nothing, keeping more, you know, dry powder on the side that those all sort of apply right now as uh, as we kind of figure out what's happening in some of these ranges. So that is it. Thanks, as always, for tuning in and watching every uh, Tuesday. We do our midweek video just like this. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or uh, stick with us on our blog uh, at The Trade Risk. We post all these videos and uh, we'll keep you up to date with all of the latest. So hope you have a great rest of the day. We'll see you back here tomorrow for some swing trade ideas during the market session.